Hello and welcome back to my top 10 weekly Shonen Jump anime video series. This is the third and final part, so if you haven't already, then pause and go watch parts 1 and 2 before continuing. For those who have already seen them, then continue watching and enjoy the video. Without further ado, let's get started. Number 2, The Quintessential Quintuplet Season 2. Out of all the series on this list, this is easily the most unique one. We've seen typical battle series such as Drag Mall and Hakusho, was well well as exciting thrillers such as Neverland and Death Note. That's what a large majority of Jump is made of, however there are some exceptions and one of those series is the Quintuplets. This spot specifically goes to its second season because it's notably better than its first. Season 1 was overall very solid but nothing mind blowing. On the other hand, season 2 blew me away, I was very surprised by how great it actually was. Now what exactly is the Quints about? Well, it's about a high schooler named Fudaro who tutors a family of 5 girls girls who, as the title suggests, are quintuplets. During the series, all the girls slowly improve their grades while also getting closer to Fudaro. This is a harem series, so of course all five sisters end up falling for him because that's just how it is. One thing that's so great about the series is that it's very difficult to determine who Fudaro will end up choosing. In most harems, it's usually very obvious who the main character will end up with, which doesn't make for a very exciting story. However, that's not the case here, and this ends up being one of the strongest aspects of the series. The strongest would probably be its cast of characters, which are all mostly great. During Season 2, they all get a lot of development, which makes them more interesting and likable. Unfortunately, just like Neverland, I can't go into much detail due to spoilers. All I can say is that I love Season 2 of Quint. It's a fantastic sequel that's leagues better than its predecessor. Everything you'd want in a sequel is here. The only thing that's missing would be a conclusion to the series, although that is happening in the new movie which is releasing later this year. That said for the number 2 spot, but before we move on to number 1, here are some honorable mentions. The first honorable mention goes to one of Jump's most recent series, Dr. Stone. Like many of the shows on this list, Dr. Stone has a great main premise. In it, the entire human race turns into stone statues for 3700 years. After all that time, one of the statues finally breaks and the human inside it was a high schooler named Senku. He's not just any ordinary high schooler though, in fact he's one of if not the smartest high schooler in the world. That's because he's dedicated his entire life to science since he loves it so much. And because he loves science, he wants to discover the reason for why everyone turned to stone. After a year, he eventually creates a fluid that breaks people from their stone statues. Shortly after this, Senku discovers that there are other humans still on earth and realizes that they're all living like cavemen. Because of this, he spends time with these people and introduces them to science. Now I hate science, I always have and probably always will. I never had any interest in it and thought everything was too complicated and confusing. That being said, whether you like science or not, you can still get a lot of enjoyment from Dr. Stone. It's always so fun and exciting to see what Senku ends up creating with the limited resources he has. He basically has to create everything he needs from scratch. For example, there's one character who's very sick and is almost about to die due to an illness. Because of this, Senku decides that it's going to make an antibiotic to cure her, which is easier said than done. He spends weeks finding and gathering all the materials he needs and eventually creates the antibiotic and saves her. It's extremely satisfying seeing Senku dedicate all his time to creating things in order to help everyone around him. The only nitpick I'd have for the anime is that it's a very bare bone adaptation, which isn't really a problem. The pacing is fine and the animation is fine too, but there's nothing noteworthy about its production. Like other series, the anime is solely good because the source material is good. Now on to the second and last honorable mention, which is One Piece. One Piece is one of the biggest and most popular series in Japan. Its manga has been running since 1997 and its anime since 1999. At the time of this video, both total at over 1,000 chapters and episodes, which is insane. In terms of total runtime, it's currently the 8th longest anime of all time. That's a mighty accomplishment, but there's also a reason for this and not a good one. One Piece has been airing and releasing new episodes for nearly 23 years and has been doing so on a weekly basis. Every once in a while, the studio might skip a week due to circumstances, but usually there's been 50 episodes released every single year. Because of this, the quality of the series isn't very high, in fact it's pretty low. In terms of animation, One Piece is very poor, lacking, and limited. A fair amount 
percent of the anime consists of still shots with characters not moving at all, and even if they are moving, it typically doesn't look good either. Sometimes the show can look decent or even good, but that's rare. Most of the anime looks pretty bad, which is unfortunate. The creator Ichiro Oda is well known for multiple things, and one of those is his great character designs. Oda loves taking one aspect of a character and exaggerating it to the extreme. For example, if he wants a character to appear big and threatening, he'll make them huge and leagues taller than everyone else. Because of this, some of his designs can end up looking rather goofy, but that's okay. One Piece isn't a dark, grim, serious story. It's mainly supposed to be lighthearted and fun. This is one of the reasons why these designs are so well crafted and made. Another one of Oda's strengths is his storytelling. For two and a half decades, Oda has been writing One Piece chapters for nearly every week without much breaks. But despite this hardship, he's managed to continue writing quality stories all this time. I've only experienced about half the series at this point, and there's only one arc which I didn't like. And even then, it's not awful. It's just very flawed, kinda boring, and mediocre. Going solely by word of mouth, everything in which I haven't read or seen ranges from pretty good to great. This is mainly why I have the anime as only an honorable mention. I haven't seen half of the series, so I'm just going off of what others have said. I could love the rest of the series, or it could just be okay. I don't know, which is why I couldn't put it on the list. However, the biggest reason why I couldn't put it on is due to its pacing. Similar to the original DBZ, One Piece moves at a sluggish pace and contains a lot of filler within each episode. A typical One Piece episode is 24 minutes long and goes as follows. The studio logo appears for 15 seconds, followed by a 2.5 minute opening intro song. After this is a 35 second explanation of the series' main premise, which then got extended to about 65 seconds later into the show's run. After this is a recap of the previous episode, which could last anywhere from a minute or even up to 5 sometimes. If you take all of that into consideration, then at most there's only about 15 minutes worth of actual new content per episode. At least a third of episodes are spent filling in time with footage we've already seen before, which sucks. So much time is wasted watching One Piece, which is why a lot of people prefer reading the manga, which is much better. The anime has some big flaws, but it still has some of the strengths that the manga has. There's just not much reason to watch the series instead of reading it. Alright, those were the honorable mentions, so now it's time to reveal the number one weekly Shonen Jump anime. Number 1, Hunter x Hunter 2011. For anyone who's seen a fair amount of anime, this shouldn't be very surprising. A ton of people love Hunter x Hunter, and its 2011 adaptation was critically acclaimed and continues to be seen as one of the best anime to date. Hunter x Hunter was originally adapted in 1999 by Nippon Animation, and it was overall pretty good. It lasted 62 episodes, and an additional 30 OVA episodes were made from 2002 to 2004. After that, the anime caught up with the manga, so the studio just stopped producing episodes since they lacked the material to adapt. Then in 2011, one of the best studios, Studio Madhouse, got the rights and created a 148 episode run of the series. Everything that worked in the original transitioned over smoothly, and some of the problems in it were fixed here too. As mentioned, the original anime was very solid, although it did have its issues. The pacing, while not bad, was also not perfect. Some moments were notably slower than others, and there were scenes that could have been sped up or trimmed out entirely. That's one of the biggest strengths of the 2011 version, which is its pacing. To give a comparison, 99 total that 92 episodes. 2011 reached that same point at only episode 75. The pacing is fantastic. It's never slow when it's also never rushed or too fast. Another upgrade from 99 is its animation. For its time, the anime looked fairly good, although 2011 looks leagues better. In 99, some of the colors felt washed out, appeared a bit too dull, plus the character designs weren't as good either. On its own, it's still perfectly fine, but now that 2011 exists, there's almost nothing that 99 does better. The only instant where 99 has an advantage would be during its more darker scenes and arcs. The duller colors work better there and help match the tone the series was going for. That being said, it's such a small thing, plus the same parts look great in 2011 anyway. The art and animation in 
general is fantastic in 2011. It starts out great, but only gets better as it goes on. Not only that, but it's amazing how consistently great the anime looks. This is a 148 episode anime, and every episode looks at worst good. I seriously don't think any of these episodes are poorly animated. It's unbelievable, and I think that describes everything about the 2011 adaptation. Everything you could ask for in an adaptation is here. Tight pacing, amazing animation, great soundtrack, and a flawless and faithful adaptation of an already beloved manga series. Hunter x Hunter 2011 is one of my favorite anime. I still wouldn't say it's perfect, but I have no problem saying it's a perfect adaptation. Well, that's finally it. That's my list and also the end of this short video series. If you watched it all and are also a fan of anime, then I'm sure you're going to disagree with at least some of my placements. But that's okay. Everyone is different and everyone has their own unique opinions. Well, except for me, because everything I say is factually correct. But anyway, that's the end of the video. Thank you so much for watching.